Well, good morning, everyone, on this snowy morning. Um, we can't be gathered together in a building, but I wanted to be able to share with you uh, truth about God and uh, to be able to have, uh, fellowship as best we can under the circumstances. So we're going to have a little bit of a church service here in, from my home, singing a few songs. Uh, you can follow along up on the screen alongside of me. And then we'll uh, have a puppet show and then uh, some scripture. So let's start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you we can be together here. And we thank you, Lord, uh, for technology. And we pray, Lord, your blessing. We ask your safety for everyone and with the snow and the storm. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that we will experience your Holy Spirit in a wonderful way, even this morning, in Jesus' name. Well, let's start with a song of worship. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O oh, oh, my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new Yes, the Lord is worthy to be praised and to be honored and given 
all that he deserves because he is the king of glory, the creator of all things, the lover of our souls. So all glory should be to Christ. Should nothing of our head could stand, no legacy survive, unless the Lord does reign. The house in vain, its builders strive. To you who boast, to mortals gain. Tell me what is your life? A mist that vanishes. ago. The message today is a uh, very well known uh, piece of scripture quoted by many people, people who don't even know who Jesus is, and it is the truth shall set you free. Did you know that it was Jesus that said those words? This song asks the question, people, do you want to be free? People, do you want to be free right now? Fears that grip your soul. People, do you want to be free right now? Jesus can make you whole. Jesus can make you 
Jesus Christ is the one who brings freedom to us, the one who died on the cross for our sins, the one who rose from the dead, the one who loves us and uh, paid for our sins on the cross to give us this privilege of being able to walk with God. And uh, my question to you, have you heard the voice of Jesus? Can you hear the voice of Jesus? <clears throat> because <clears throat> that is, God is speaking. Truth is being revealed. And we're going to sing a song called The Voice of Jesus. Um, and uh, this song here, it's another one that I wrote years ago, but it, it asks that question, can you hear the voice of God? He's calling from his word. You wonder, you know, people think, well, uh, you know, God is silent. He's not silent. He speaks through the word of God, the Bible, in his powerful ways, by the presence of his Holy Spirit. He reveals the truth. He speaks through creation all around us. The Bible says that all creation testifies that there's a God. He speaks through circumstances. He speaks through other believers. He speaks through anything. He can speak any way that he wants to. But are you listening for the voice of God? This world 
taken away, taken away. You are safe in my hand, and you also are in my father's care. We are one in his love, and you can never be taken away, taken away. Everybody is um, buckled down and and tucked in with this big snowstorm and the wind and everything. And I know that it's a, that kind of a day, but anyway, you can enjoy it. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hey, who are you? I'm Leon the Lion. You are? What are you doing here? I don't know how I got here. I'm this snow is terrible. What's the matter with it? It's nice and white and you can have a lot of fun with it. Fun? I was in Africa and it was plenty warm and I liked it. And then suddenly, all of a sudden, a lady comes along named Heather and she buys me, puts me in a bag and now here I am in Canada freezing with this awful snow. Snow? Snow's not awful. Yes, it is. No. Did you know that the Bible actually says that there's treasures in the snow? Treasure? No way. It's terrible. Well, do you know that our country in Canada, we get snow in the winter. Oh, you're not telling me something I don't know. Yeah, but did you un know that when you, um, when it snows, that it puts moisture up in the mountains and it makes the rivers full so that we have water all the time. Oh, yeah, like lots of parts of Africa are very dry. That's true, that's true. Sometimes I have a hard time finding water. Well, you wouldn't have a hard time finding water here. There's water everywhere. How come? Because of the snow. God brings the snow and it causes the rivers to be filled and the ponds and so that wells of water are everywhere. Wow, never thought of that. I know in Africa they're always trying to drill wells for water. Yes, my friends Abraham and Sarah, they're drilling a well today. They're trying to get water for a village that doesn't have any. They don't have any snow in Africa, not there. You're right there. Wow, I never thought of that. So even if it's cold, it's still good. It is, Leo, and it's really nice to meet you, and I hope you get used to Canada. Well, I'll try to. Hey, and you know what? Children love snow, too. They love to play in it and make snowballs and go sl sledding. Can't do that if there's no snow. Hey, that's true. Well, maybe I'll try going down a, a hill, s sliding. Is that what you call it? Yeah, sliding, sledding, going on a toboggan, whatever. It, God gives us all different kinds of things in our world. And snow is actually one of them. Wow. Well, I am, I, I, I am an excited lion. Well, you know what? I got a pretty good coat of hair. You do. And uh, maybe I'll get used to the cold. It'll take a little time, and in the meantime, maybe 
that uh, Heather can make a jacket for you so when you go out in the cold, you won't be so cold. Hey, that sounds awesome. Well, Leo the Lion, it's been nice to meet you. Hey, you too. Yeah, and don't forget, that's the Bible actually says there's treasures in the snow. And I'm sure everybody here in Canada are not complaining about the snow today. Maybe you're thinking, oh, how wonderful God gave us snow and time to be able to snuggle inside and shut everything down and enjoy each other and enjoy the Lord today on Sunday. Sounds like a good idea. Wow, treasures in the snow. Hmm. Well, maybe I'll go out and see if I can find any. Well, we'll see. Anyway, it's been nice to meet you, Leo, and I hope you you hang around for a while. Oh, yeah, I think I will. I'm not so angry about the snow anymore. Especially there's none left on my head. For sure. Well, we'll talk to you later. Okay, bye. Bye, Leo. Yes, friends, God made the snow. God made everything. We don't have to live in complaining. We can trust God that he knows what he's doing. How often I've heard the farmers say, well, I hope that we hit enough snow in the mountains so that we can make, uh, uh, you know, have a good crop in the summer. God has a reason and a plan for everything in your life. The Lord Jesus Christ is really the real answer for all things. I'm going to sing a song for you, and this song is called The Truth Will Set You Free. And it's a song written by Dion and sung by him. Uh, Dion, if you, some of you older people remember Dion and the Belmonts, uh, Run Around Sue. But he came to know the Lord later on, and he uh, did some Christian albums. And this is kind of like his testimony, growing up in New York City, walking... Uh, the wrong way in his life and then having heard the message from his father that Jesus died on the cross carried rang in his ears until finally he too came to know the Lord so it's kind of a little bit of a story but I'll play it for you anyway it goes like this down the dirty city streets black top sneakers on my feet I raced to early teenage years, dealt with all those nameless fears. Waiting as the school bell rang, dropped my books and joined the gang. In alley fights and stick ball games, the passing girls wore dirty names. Over my shoulder and back through the years, I can't see my father's eyes. set you free Yeah, how the truth can set you free I Turn my collar comb my hair I hide all the confusion there and Two dimes made my pockets ring I was a wealthy New York king Beat through by the candy store Knew my world, it wanted more My high school colors of black and blue They would disturb my point of view Over my shoulder and back through the years I can see my father's eyes in my memory Saying why Jesus died upon the cross All was one Nothing lost How the truth Can set you free yeah. How the truth Can set you free Can the store turn Shopping mall Two dimes will buy you much at all The boy Caruso on the street His father now In secret 
songs years go by I've dodged the truth and hate's a lie It's not what's in your pocket, son What's in your heart that makes us one Over my shoulder and back through the years I can see my father's eyes in my memory Same why Jesus died upon the cross All is one and nothing lost How the truth can set you free Gospel of John, chapter 8. We have been uh, doing this, uh, going through the Gospel of John, and this is the passage that we come to. So we're going to be focusing on this little statement that Jesus has made, that the truth will set you free. John eight thirty one. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you abide in my word... You are my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. So they answered him, this was the Pharisees, the rulers of the Jews, we're Abraham's descendants. We've never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? And Jesus answered them, most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And the slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. I know you're Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. So the Lord Jesus wants people to know the truth. And he wants you to know the truth. He wanted these folks to know the truth as well. And if we go back to 831, he says, Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Jesus is making it clear that his word is the truth. Because the next phrase is, you'll know the truth and the truth shall make you free. If you want to know the truth, you need to know what God has to say, friends. You need to know what his word says, because his word is true. And his word reveals truth so that you can become free. That's not complicated. But we are living in a world and in a society today, and it was so at the time of Christ, where people don't want to know the truth. Jesus challenged these people that they weren't free, that they needed to be made free. And in John 8, 33, he answered them, we're Abraham's descendants. We've never been in bondage to anyone. They didn't even know what sinners they were. And my friends, that is often the case. So many people think there's nothing wrong with them. And we live in a world, and frankly, a lot of times in psychology, where it says, no, you're good, you're good, you're good, you're good. And all the while, something within us says, no, there's something wrong. <clears throat> it's kind of like if you had a, a medical illness, 
and you could you you knew there was something wrong and you can sense it in your body and you go to the doctor and sometimes not all doctors like this but once in a while a doctor might say oh no you're fine you're fine you're fine this has happened many times and i spoke to people who said you know they never got it in time but i knew there was something wrong and so uh there is a sense there is a conviction that comes from god that there is something wrong that we're all sinners that we need help, that we need deliverance from our sins. We need to be set free. And much time and money and energy and, and, and doctoring and everything else has been done to try and convince people that the human race is good. My friends, if the human race was basically good, we wouldn't be in the mess we're in. We are constantly in a mess. There are always wars going on. There's always bickering and fighting. Everything says there's something wrong however everybody wants to say no we're not no we're, we're good i'm okay i'm free and you and and that's what the abraham's descendants. these people said we're abraham's descendants because abraham is our father we've never been bondage to anyone how can you say you will be made free but jesus gives the answer here most assured i say whoever commits sin is a slave of sin well how many of you have committed sin how many of us have committed sin does that not leave us in slavery he says, a slave does not stay in a house forever, but the son abides forever. <clears throat> so if the son makes you free, then you'll be free indeed. This is the reality, friends. My question to you today, if the truth will set you free, and if the son is the one who makes you free, because Jesus is the very truth, are you free? Have you been set free? But the only place that you can be truly set free to live the way you're supposed to live to walk the way you're supposed to walk is by jesus christ if the son makes you free then my friends you will be free indeed later on when jesus stood before pilate to be judged by pilate he had been judged by the pharisees and ruled to be a wicked man which was a lie uh, when he stands, stands before Pilate, Pilate said to him, Are you the, a king then? And Jesus answered, You say rightly that I'm a king. For this cause I was born. And for this cause I've come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. And so Pilate said to him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no fault in him at all. My friends, we are living in an age where the words of Pilate ring. What is truth? People are saying, well, truth is whatever you make it to be. If you believe something's true, then that makes it true. And that, my friend, is a lie. Truth is always truth, and lies are always lies. <clears throat> so let's not find ourselves in a place where we begin to try to twist what is true to actually say something is what it isn't because we'll be in big trouble and we are in big trouble we're living in a society where god has made things the way they are and we are saying no that's not the way they are this is the way they are and we decide to believe a lie rather than the truth look what it says in proverbs 23 23 it says buy the truth and do not sell it also wisdom and instruction and understanding. The idea here is, is if, if you were a merchant and you were going looking for something, you'd look for what's most important and what's most important, you would hold on to it. And he says here, buy the truth and do not sell it. In other words, find the truth wherever you can, get a hold of it, pay whatever is necessary to have the truth in your life. And that means to, to be willing to give up your lies, to be willing to give up your ideas and take a hold of God's ideas and don't sell it. Don't let go of it for anything. Hold on to it. <clears throat> and then what's added to truth is wisdom, instruction, and understanding. But if you don't start with the truth, you're not going to have any wisdom, you're not going to have any instruction, and you're not going to have any understanding. Isaiah 59, 14 this was written way back. And yet, what do we find today? Justice is turned back. And righteousness stands far off. For truth is fallen in the street. And equity cannot enter. Equality cannot enter. Oftentimes, the very ones that are shouting equality are speaking lies. 
Truth has fallen in the street. Righteousness stands far off. Justice turned back. Oh, does that not reflect on our society today? Where there's no justice, where there's no righteousness, it's far off. Where the truth has fallen and there's no true equality. An equality that loves every person, not on the basis of color of skin or nationality or any of those things, but a love that reaches out and cares for people as each person being precious. Not where we take away the very truths of God and try to twist them into some kind of lie. Not where we, t we, we, we teach our children that they're not good enough in the body that God gave them and where we encourage them that their body is not good enough and it has to be warped and changed and twisted. That's not a truth. That's a lie. Jeremiah 7, 28. This is what it says here. And this was the prophet Jeremiah. You shall say to them, this is a nation that does not obey the voice of the Lord, their God, nor receive correction. Truth has perished and has been cut off from their mouth. My friend, a lie is always a lie and truth is always the truth. Truth has perished. Oh, this is so true in so many hearts and lives. But I want you to know that there is hope. There is a, a light in the darkness. And he goes on to say this, And like their bow, they have bent their tongues for lies. They are not valiant for the truth on the earth. For they proceed from evil to evil, and they do not know me, says the Lord. We are moving in this direction so rapidly, friends. We are in this place, just as it was in the days of Jeremiah. And what happened in the days of Jeremiah is that the judgment of God fell on the nation of Israel because that is the direction that they went in. What direction are you in? Are you believing lies or are you believing the truth? Let me encourage you, my friends. It is worth to believe in the truth. And if you do believe in the truth, be valiant for the truth on the earth. That's what it says here. They were not valiant for the truth. Speak the truth and speak it boldly. People will not like you for it at times. That's true. They didn't like Jesus for it. They said, oh, what are you saying? We're, we're, we're never in bondage anyway. We're not, we're not in slavery. And Jesus said, yes, you are. You're in slavery to sin. And you need to be made free. And my friends, let me tell you this. If you have not come to God and trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have not taken his word as the truth, then you are living in a lie and you're living in slavery. And you need to be set free. Some of it is being deceived by others. And some of it is being self-deceived. And some of it is the deception of the devil himself. But you can be made free. Praise God, there is a way out of this. Because the result of living in a lie is this. In Romans 1.18, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. God will pour out his judgment on those who do something. What do they do in Romans 1.25? They exchange the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who's blessed forever. Amen. Mankind has chosen to worship itself and to worship its idols, its things that, it, that they own, whatever it might be. And so instead of God being the center, they become the center. And if I become the center, supposedly, then I can say what's truth and what's not because now I'm God. Now I can warp things. I can say I am what I'm not. And it must be true because I said it. But do you see how foolish it is? What a lie it is? How crazy this is? How far away from reality this is? And what the consequences are? Are self-destruction and also the very anger and wrath of God poured out on the world. That's the truth, friends. I'm not going to sugarcoat that. I'm going to tell you the truth. You know, if, if, if you were going under the operating table and you had the doctor there, you had the nurse there, and you had the anesthesiologist, I believe that's the right way to say it, is it, Heather? Yeah, the anesthesiologist is there, and uh, they're all sincere, and they want to do the best for you, and they're going to try and make sure that you're going to be okay. 
But somewhere down in the bowels of the hospital, there were tanks, and say it was a tank had oxygen, another tank had carbon monoxide, or a dioxide, whatever. Anyway, somebody put the wrong label on a tank. It gets shipped up into the operating room. Everybody in that room is completely sincere. They want to do the best by you, but if you're hooked up to the wrong tank, you die. They can try their best, and they don't know what's going on. But the problem is, is there's a lie underneath it. There's a wrong label somewhere. And my friend, that is often the case. You need to know what the truth is, or else catastrophe comes. It's an absolute catastrophe. If you built a plane, and you know somebody said, well, let's take a little shortcut here. Let's, let's make a little lie. Let's make this look okay when it's not. What happens? There's a lie in there. And eventually, it will reveal itself to catastrophe. And my friends, we are rushing towards catastrophe because we are not believing the truth. In John 3, 19, Jesus said this, This is the condemnation that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. My friends, do not embrace the darkness. Do not embrace lies. Come to the light, come to the truth, because here's what it says. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light because he don't want his deeds to be exposed. It is far better for a light to shine on your problem now than for you to find yourself lost for eternity later. Same idea. If I'm sick and I have a a tumor or a cancer or a growth or something, and I know it's there, but I don't want to deal with it, so I'll just cover it up and it'll go away. No, what has to happen, it has to be exposed. And once it's exposed, then something can be done with it. But we are not willing to have our sin exposed. We are not willing to come. But listen what it says here in John three twenty one. But he who does the truth, the truth comes to the light so that his deeds may be clearly seen they've been done in God. The person who realizes, I can't live in a lie. I can't live under this deception. I don't want to deceive myself, nor to deceive others or be deceived. I want to know the truth. And I can tell you this, if you want to know the truth, you're going to come up against Jesus Christ, and he will set you free. You see, the wrath of God is revealed. God will pour out judgment. 2 Thessalonians 2.9 says, Speaking of the last days, sometimes it looks like that's where we are, but God knows. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. There will be such a deception that will come, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish. Lies, unrighteous deception. And it is among those who perish. And why are they perishing? because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Oh, my friend, go for the truth, buy the truth, sell it not. Don't find yourself here, because what happens is the more deception we walk in, the, the more we cannot seem to find our way. The more it seems impossible to know what's real and what's not, what's true and what's not. The amount of confusion that we have right now in the world is incredible. People don't know right from wrong, and they do not understand, and they are confused. And there are many who are propagating that wrong is right, and right is wrong. My friends, it is a, an unrighteous deception, and it will be among those who perish. Are you one of the ones who will perish? Are you one who will come and receive the love of the truth so that you might be saved? That's right what it says in the Bible. God's word is still relevant today for what it was back then. So that they all may con be condemned, it says in 2 Thessalonians 2.12, all will be condemned who do not believe the truth, but have your pleasure in unrighteousness. Is there pleasure there? Yes. The Bible says the pleasure of sin is for a season, but in the end it brings death. Do not pursue sinful pleasure, my friend. Do not stand condemned because you do not believe the truth, but come to the truth, believe the truth. 
You know, in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13, speaking to believers, because even believers can sometimes walk in deception, get derailed. And so Paul writes to them and says, he speaks about the devil attacking, and he uses the picture of, of, of a Christian wearing armor to be protected. He says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God so you'll be able to withstand in the evil day. And there's a lot of evil days. And having done all to stand. In other words, if you have this armor on, you're going to be able to stand against the evil that comes against you, and you'll still be standing at the end of it. And then he begins to speak about the armor of God. I'm not going to go through all of that, but in Ephesians 6.14, it says, Stand therefore, having your waist girded with the truth. In other words, stand with the belt of truth upon you. Now, the picture here is of a soldier. And a Roman soldier, um, you know, in that country, they had more of a, like a skirt rather than, you know, pants and a, and a, and a shirt. And, and so if, if they, it's because of the heat. And so when they weren't in battle, they would have it open so that they could be cooled off somewhat. And, but when it came time for battle, their cloak and their cloak, their cloak, pardon me, and their whatever uh, they had on, they would put the belt around so that it wouldn't be in their way. It wouldn't get tangled. They wouldn't be confused. They wouldn't suddenly begin to draw their sword and it's caught in their clothing. The clothing was bound so that they, they would be able to fight. I suppose in modern day language, if you didn't have a belt on, you had a pair of pants and you went to battle and your pants landed down at your ankles, you certainly wouldn't be in a good shape to fight, would you? So they use the picture here, uses the picture of the belt because the belt ties everything together, you see. The belt keeps things where they should be. And my friend, that's exactly what truth does. It prevents you from getting entangled, stumbling, falling, and it keeps you free to be able to live righteously. A beautiful picture that is given there. Now in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, it speaks about the battle that we have. And it is a battle. We're dealing with all kinds of situations in life, aren't we? Life is, is not a bowl of cherries, shall we say. So here he gives another picture as if you were in a battle. And he says, though we walk in the flesh, we're walking in this body, we're not warring according to the flesh. But the weapons of our warfare are not kernel, they're not of the flesh, but they're mighty in God to pull down strongholds. Now, he's giving this picture of a battle, but what are the strongholds that he's speaking of here in this warfare that we are in? That is, to fight for truth and to live in the right, in the right way in, the, in an ungodly world. Here's where the strongholds are, are. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So what is this? This is a statement that says, listen, the real strongholds are between your ears, lies. And if you live in a lie, will it ever affect your life? I've used this illustration at other times, but supposing you're in your house today and um, you're convinced somebody told you a lie and said, if you ever step outside of your house, the moment you step outside, you'll be struck by lightning. Now you'd say, well, you'd be crazy to believe that. Listen, a lot of people believe a lot of crazy things, but if you were convinced that that was true, if you were convinced that that lie was true, how would it affect you? You'd never leave your house. It would affect your entire life because of one crazy lie. So my friends, lies are very important. They are strongholds. And every one of us have a certain amount of lies that we still believe in our minds and they hinder us. Truth sets you free. Lies bring you into slavery. They keep you bound. They keep you from being able to live freely the way God wants you to live. And so that's why it says here, every argument and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, that's a lie against the knowledge of God. So bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Because Christ is truth. Because the truth will set you free. 
and lies will bring you into slavery. How much slavery are you living in? If you've never accepted Christ, you're in abject slavery and you'll be lost for eternity until you turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. I tell you the truth, that if you want to be saved, you have to come to Jesus. Because he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. He's the truth. He's the way. He's the life. Don't think you can go any other way. And if you say, well, I ju I'll, just won't, I'll just be a good person. You're not a good person. That's the truth. I want to tell you the truth. Everybody has sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we need to be saved. We need to be forgiven. The next verse says, being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. In other words, deal with it. Don't, don't allow lies to have any place in your life. Be ruthless in obeying the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, the psalmist said in Psalm 25, 5, Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. On you I wait all the day. May it be your prayer today. Lord, lead me in your truth and teach me. You can pray that to the Lord. You can pray that to the Lord right now, wherever you are. And if there's a, a real desire for truth, if you really want to know the truth, God will reveal it to you and you will know what it is to be set free. Psalm 86, 11 says, Teach me your way, O Lord. I will walk in your truth and unite my heart to fear your name. Anytime we move into sin, somewhere on that journey, we believe the lie. Whatever it is, no matter how sugar-coated it is, somehow, we begin to move in the direction of sin because a lie has been told to us. The Bible says that the devil is the author of lies. It's what he did in the garden when he deceived Adam and Eve and told them, you will not surely die. When God had said, you will die. And they did die. And death came to the whole human race. And the death came to our walk with God was broken. Spiritual death happened. Physical death happened. And a final death called the second death in the lake of fire will happen to those who walk in deception. There's a beautiful verse in Genesis 24:48, and I, I just it's just such a touching verse. This was a man named Eliezer, and he'd been called by Abraham to go and to uh, find a wife for Isaac. Eliezer was Abraham's servant. And so he went on the journey. And as he went on the journey, he, he prayed and he asked God uh, for guidance to lead him in the way so that he might know exactly where the right woman was for Isaac. And so he finds her. And uh, as it, when he finds her, he is amazed how God arranged it. I can't go into the story now, but it's God uses circumstances. He went to a well to get water and when he was waiting by the well, a woman comes to the well. He didn't know who she was, but he discovers this is the girl. And here's what he says. And I bowed my head, and I worshiped the Lord, and I blessed the Lord God of my master Abraham, who led me in the way of truth to take the daughter of my master's brother for his son. God led me in the way of truth. My friends, I, I give thanks to God today that he led me in the way of truth. Oh, how thankful I am. I was so full of lies. I believed my own lies. I was a liar. And my life was a lie until I met Jesus. And then I began to see the truth. And I began to see that sin and all the things that I thought were everything were nothing. And that Jesus is really everything. And all the truths of God become so precious what a change God brings into your life. And so I too worship the Lord and I bless the Lord God because he led me in the way of truth. He can do the same for you. And if he has, give thanks to God and continually ask him, Lord, keep leading me in that way of truth. Yes, John three twenty one says, he who does the truth comes to the light so his deeds may be clearly seen. They've been done in God. That's what happens. In John 4, 23, Jesus was speaking to a woman at a well. 
But the hour is coming, he says, and now is. It's right now when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. God wants worshipers, but it's got to be in the truth. There are people who are saying, I worship God, I belong to God, I love God, I, you know, God is my Savior, and yet they're living in constant sin and rebellion against God. That's a lie. And that lie will put you in hell. Don't be deceived. If there is no transformation in your life by putting your faith in Jesus Christ, then there is no real faith in Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ comes to set you free. God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. As I said, there are many people who think, I can worship God in spirit, but I can do what I want. You must obey the truth of what the word of God says. Remember what Jesus said, I quoted it already in John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He didn't just say, I'm the way and the life, but I'm the truth. So do not think that we can be deceive ourselves into thinking we can practice sin and it's okay. It's never okay. Sin is never right. In John 14, 17, speaking of the Holy Spirit, we can see the, the marriage between spirit and truth. He says this, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and he shall be in you. The very title of the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. So don't buy the lie that you can walk in the spirit and not walk in the truth. John, Jesus' prayer in John 17, 17 is very clear. Make them holy, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. If you will not be willing to bow to the truth of the word of God, you will find yourself living in a lie. And God wants to make you holy through the truth. In 1 Corinthians 13, 6, speaking of love, because often you hear people saying, you just got to love, you just got to love. Never mind the truth, just love. Listen, here's what it says here. Love does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. My friends, if we do not walk according to the word, it actually tells us in 1 John chapter 2 that there's, the love of God does not abide in someone who does not walk according to the word of God. Love is a word that is bandied about in our society today, and most people don't have a clue what it actually means. Real love knows the truth and walks in the truth. If I'm going to love you, then I'm going to tell you the truth, even if it hurts, even if it shows where something is wrong. Now, I'm called to speak the truth in love. Ephesians 4.15 says that. It's not that I'm going to speak the truth without love. Oh, friends, um, truth without love is not a very good picture. But love without the truth is no good either. Both go together. And as we do speak the truth in love, as we grow up in all the things, the head, the head that is Christ himself, God wants you to know the truth, walk in the truth, and live in the truth. The truth will set you free. The truth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The truth that we are sinners. The truth that we are lost in our sins, and yet God sent His Son Jesus to save us. And the truth that He died on the cross for your sins so you can be saved. My friend, today, you can discover the truth. You can come to the Lord Jesus Christ. You can discover what it is. Even now that if you're a believer already, then walk in the truth. Avoid every lie that you can. And as you walk in the truth, you'll be his disciples indeed. You will know the truth. And the truth will make you free. This is where real freedom lies. It will not be in sin. It will not be in the way of the world. But it will be following, believing, and trusting in Jesus Christ. Let me encourage you today, you can ask the Lord Jesus Christ to lead you in the truth, lead you in the way of righteousness. You can ask God, show me, Lord, what is true and what is a lie, and he will. If you are willing to ask him, he will. But then you have to bow to it. 
And let me encourage you most of all to bow to Jesus Christ and receive him as your savior right now. Because the truth is, the Bible says, if you believe, if you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. The truth is, now is the time. Today is the day of salvation. You can be saved today. That's the truth. You might think, oh, not me. It would take a long time for me to be saved because I'm a terrible sinner. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. That's the truth. So today you can be saved. Today you can know deliverance. And may God grant it to you, I pray, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. <clears throat> so, we're going to sing a, a simple song to close our service, and it's called Simple Truths. My friends, they may be simple, but they are profound in the reality that um, when we trust in the Lord, we discover that the greatest truths are not complicated. And one of them is that God actually loves you and that you can come come just as you are to Jesus Christ. The simple truths of God are the greatest truths of all. Even a small child can know them. Christian, don't lose out bless you, keep you safe, and may you discover this wonderful truth. May you know the truth and may you be set free by a wonderful Savior who sees you in your darkness and struggles and wants to bring you into his light. Amen.